Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to AI for VAs. And I'm delighted to have today's guest, Rachel Pearson from Accountant um, Bookkeeping and Accountancy Company. Um, welcome today, Rachel. Thank you for having me, Danielle. And Rachel is um, a local. She we, We're practically neighbours. <laughs> um, so we're both based in Bradford in West Yorkshire. So it's lovely to meet somebody um, local and have them in the group as well. And I'll do a quick run through as to why I wanted Rachel to join us today, because she's going to talk to us about things that she's implementing in, he in her business and the impact that they're having from an AI perspective. But to give you um, a bit of a, re uh, a run through as to, like I say, what, what's brought Rachel here today. So she is a director of Account Ant. And um, that is an accountancy and bookkeeping practice, which she set up in 2021. And she set that up after dreaming of running her own business for, the, for five years before that. And she worked in multi-million pound businesses for about 18 years. And she always felt that there was a lot that small businesses could get, gain from learning from the knowledge that these big, big businesses had. And Rachel specializes in helping small businesses in the UK who love to work with positivity and she loves to work with ambitious individuals and businesses who are in it to win it. So, <laughs> like I say, I'm so delighted to have her here. And like I say, um, all the better that she's a northern lass and she's she lives around the corner from me. But um, like I say, I know that Rachel is implementing some really marvellous things in her business. So mm -hmm. I'll I'll hand over to her to, you know, again, if she wants to introduce herself, but to, to really talk us through where she is in implementing AI so far. And so we can all get a feel for um, what people are doing out there in terms of, you know, Rachel, I know, has used VAs in the past as well. Maybe he's using them at the time. Sure she'll, at this time, she'll talk to us about that as well. Um, but again, to understand where we all fit in together from a business owner, VA and AI perspective. So I'll hand over to you, Rachel. Thank you. I think the intro was Bob on. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, I do like um, the positive people that are just in it to win it, like you said, um, because it is kind of a game, isn't it? This this business stroke life thing, a bit of a roller coaster as well. But you can't really go into it with a woe is me kind of mentality. You kind of have to just keep keep trucking. Um yeah. Do you know, I do I think that's something I underestimated, Rachel, when I first set up. I think you come from I did, I come from the land of employment and then you go into you know running a business and I really underestimated how much you've got to really delve deep and, and stay positive, absolutely. Yeah. My husband was self employed before me, so I'd seen it, but oh, it's the admin. So yeah. much like actual doing you can do, you do. But there's all the other stuff, which is where AI comes in to help, doesn't it? Um, so, yeah. yeah. And is that going be good for, for you just to, like I say, to take us on a... You know, so you've been running your, your practice now for, for a, you know, a, a, what, over five years now. So is it is it five years? No, three um, years. No, it's, it's three years, sorry, three years. So, yeah. you know, you're well on your way to establishing those routines and those you know that sort of flow that workflow so if you can maybe start off by letting us know what what AI has changed in that respect for you yeah so it's I've implemented some what's automation which probably isn't necessarily called AI anymore because AI has moved yeah. so so fast um, but back when I implemented it, it was technically AI. Um, so I use a system called Dext, which is called Receipt Capture. And it's really clever. It takes a picture of your receipt and it can take the date, the supplier, the amount, the tax. If you want to split it down to line level, it can do that. Um, and then you can add in automations where you say, right, okay, if it's this supplier and it's this kind of thing, then it's always going to be coded to their auto publish. So then that's kind of one of the jobs that is done. Um, so that that's not cheap software, but um, I've had it for 
a year and a half, I think, and it has saved me a lot of time. Um, quantifying it, it's actually meant that I didn't need a bookkeeper for those 18 months. Okay. So a bookkeeper, I mean, I, I don't really agree with paying minimum wage. So like say 15 quid an hour, 10 hours a week. Yeah, it saved me that for 18 months. Um, which is and so you say that it's not it's not a cheap software to have, but clearly reaps no. reaps um, that money back because it's it's saved you in terms of a, a human matching all of those details and, and doing that job. Yeah. Yeah, it's not infallible. It has its like little foibles, but it does take out quite a lot of the the legwork. Um, there's a lot of chat in, in the accountancy world at the moment about AI and how it's going to kill off the profession. And uh, I totally don't think it's going to kill off the profession. I think it's just going to free our minds to actually be able to help businesses grow more efficiently. Um, because when you're doing all the receipt matching, you're not necessarily thinking about the strategy that other businesses can use to, to get where they want to be. Um, so yeah, I've had that for a while, which has been absolutely great. Um, I have had VAs on projects, so I've not needed a VA full time. Um, you know, all you know, not full time, but like consistently in that time. But when I've had peaks, I've had VAs come in or projects to do. Um, yeah. Some of those have been involved, like moving software over or literally doing admin and chasing people for information. Um, but I'll, have I'll, you, depending on when you've worked with those for years, have, have those for years used some of the new technology in AI or has it has it actually you've needed the VA because you've needed their human input? So it's been a mishmash, actually. So when I was setting up, was it MailerLite? Yes, I was moving from MailChimp to MailerLite. I asked a VA to help me because, to be honest, I was like, no, I've stared at it for an hour. I can't. I can't. I can't spend hours staring at this. Um, so I spoke to someone who was tech savvy and she used some Zapier, which I'd never really got on with myself to do some clever stuff. And um, yeah, so that, that person was tech savvy, but also sometimes it just needs a human person. So AI is, for me, an enhancement and a really good tool but it won't fully replace people for me um Abs yeah. abs and like I say i mean zappy is a really great tool and like i said i suppose strictly not ai but there are ai elements in zappy as it depending on how you say it and it's something i use massively in my business and especially with um the ai for years community as well that helps me automate some things and um yeah and there is there is alternatives like you say there's make which is an alternative i prefer zapier but um but yeah that's a great way of being able to you know if this happens do this that kind of rules yeah real based uh logic isn't it yeah yeah so the other things that i've been doing is exploring the world of bots yes um, so there's some really cool businesses out there, technology businesses that are creating bots to do real based logic things within bookkeeping. Um, but it's not just like you buy it, you get someone off Fiverr and pay them buttons to do it. It's these companies are very well established, have control systems in place. Um, and it's more logical than just press this button when you see this color kind of thing. It's press this button when you see that color it's definitely that supplier it's within a date range of this that's okay yeah. and then you kind of treat it like a person so the person that's building the bot at the moment for me is <clears throat> it's got its own laptop it's got its own email address it's got a name <laughs> i mean it's not a very uh 
out there now. It's just like bookkeeping bot. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should have called it something. My friend, I was talking to my friend on WhatsApp actually, and she thought I'd called it Al because of the capital I doesn't have AI things on it. Um, yeah, I was like Al bot. No, no, it's <laughs> it's not. Uh, yeah. So this it's not a bot then that because when I when I think most people hear bot and certainly when I think of bot, I think of like a something that I can interact with as a customer. So I might see on your website or I've got a refund that I want to process or that kind of thing. But this is a bot that your customers won't interact with, yeah. but will really sort of help you in, in terms of your operations. Yeah, so it helps with yeah, the so it helps with my practice efficiency. So it keeps okay. the the wheels turning and the the costs low <laughs> lower i suppose so, um yeah so i can then concentrate. so the reason the reason you're having this built rachel am i right in that it's very specific to accountants needs then yes yeah so it fills a slot where it i could do it myself like there's a lot of you know the bots do things that you can do yourself but still it's like you have to think of the opportunity cost of that time and me clicking a button when I like see three things isn't really cost effective really, is it? Um, no, no. Not really. You can have a bot built um, and have it working for you every night or every day, yeah. depending on when you want it going. And, and so just out of interest then, so to take a step back then, when you've obviously you've, you've instructed for this spot to be built, that'll be at some point in, in, in the near future by the sounds of it, impl you know, in, within your business. What got you from the stage of, you know, not even knowing about this spot to, you know, paying to have it built then? Um, so I'm on a trial at the moment. So at the moment there's no, no fee has been passed on but there will be in the future um so a couple of things aligned the so last year i had a bookkeeper i've tried to find a bookkeeper and i couldn't really find one that would fit into my business financially to be brutally honest um that could do the time as well and it it felt like more human time was needed and I just couldn't couldn't do it at that point um and then I was in a meeting with someone um on LinkedIn called Marie Speakman who specializes in um AI for accountants so I was chatting to her and she said oh you know do you want to have a meeting with a couple of companies about the the things that are happening sorry someone's just arrived with the paperwork <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so yeah it just started like that it's been a slow process in terms of scoping out the businesses that are offering these things and checking that they're offering what what is useful and right for the business um so yeah okay thank you <laughs> And, and so will because obviously that's looking at so by the sounds of it that's going to be quite um, handy in terms of like I say a new client coming on they've got a bit of a backlog and it will clear up and match some of that backlog yeah and so from a client perspective will you declare that you're using these tools do you how does that fit into your does that even have to happen or um from I'll tell people I'm using automation, whether I'll use the word bot specifically. Yeah. Um, I don't know because I think AI is still quite new. And uh, for people of my generation, watched a little bit too much Terminator for my liking. It's all getting a little bit too uh, real. Um, but yeah, um, I will yeah. use the line of something like... Um, using automation to be efficient as possible yeah 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 and, and really interesting like say to say, say that you really struggle to find a somebody who could deliver that very very specific task and you know especially if it's only maybe that 
task that you wanted to make that then efficient in terms of you know somebody wants to settle into doing some work but then you only want to pay for what needs doing there's a balance there isn't there that makes it is it really viable for somebody to spend you know an hour a week or a couple of hours a week on something you can yeah. you put that bill but then ai bridges that you know it fills that slot really nicely yeah yeah so i'll be using it um on one software at the minute so one one of the one of the accountancy softwares and then seeing how it works and then implement it further um but yeah that's that's a big one for me at the moment so we'll see how that goes in the coming months i'll keep you abreast of that um and when you speak to other you know especially people in the financial industry then rachel what what are their thoughts about ai in general you mentioned that this may be still a bit of you know uncertainty that you have to really look really hard to find some of these solutions what what are you sort of getting when you speak to your peers i suppose um some of them are saying that people are still faster um but I'm yet to test that theory, so I'll I'll see whether that's the case, um, and that people are more logical, as in like well not more logical than a computer, but like can think more out of the box. You know, like oh it doesn't quite match that, or I've seen that before on statements. Blah, blah, blah. It's a slightly different brain, isn't it? So there's yeah. actually not that much chatter about AI in, in like, the, the bot form in the industry at the moment. And I'm not sure whether that's because they're keeping it quiet or just not using it. But there are companies out there. I do know some quite well-known accountants and bookkeepers that do use them um, and are very vocal about it. But... The few and far between. There's still the accounts. I mean, like, like you've just seen someone's drop some paperwork off for me. Um, there's still that happens, even though you've got receipt capture cloud. There's still the people that need physical. The physical, yeah. Yeah, and there's still accountants. And like there. you say, I suppose you, you get the extremes then, don't you? You get the extreme of the people that other businesses that for whatever reason want need you know go towards that very sort of you know older style if you like of you know let's let's not embrace technology for whatever reason but you know I want the physical receipts processing or physical paperwork you've then got the other end that want you know I've spoken to people um business owners who want everything automated and everything on you know within a bot or within some sort of technology and but the, for the most part, it's going to fall as a thought and, and financial services being the same, where it's a bit of both. And it's the people that are able to sensibly use and, and, and integrate AI within their business to make the best of it. But and I think you mentioned it earlier where ultimately it frees up your headspace that, you know, clicking three buttons to get a green tick is yes, it's a job that needs doing, but does it have to be, you know, Rachel as a director of the business? No, it doesn't. And can a bot do that? Yes, it can. And is that a really good investment? By the sounds of it, yes, it's a brilliant investment. And your time then is 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 used in another way. It's more productive, it's more strategic, it's maybe giving clients more attention. Yeah. Yeah, more touch points for clients. I'm pretty, uh, I was going to say touchy-feely with clients, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do have a fair few touch points but yeah get more into their, their space and see what they're thinking and what their what their plans are and help them achieve it because that's ultimately what what makes me feel more what's the word not appropriate but like valuable yeah 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 like, like you're you're serving them as as best you can you know you've you've got like you say you you you've got a, a host of expert you know room of expertise and and your skills and and all of your background that that goes with that and the very purpose the very reason you set up your business to help small business owners and if 
if automating a couple of things is going to help you help them better, mm -hmm. then then of course you're going to do that. And yeah. so as far as sort of going forward then, Rachel, what do you, is there anything that you've thought about that, oh, it'd be great if this came into the industry or, be, or I really do see this happening? Is there any sort of, you know, if you had a crystal ball, what, what do you see happening? Um, if I had a crystal ball, it'd probably be maybe you people implementing more chatbots to sort out queries. You know, a bit like chat GPT, but like on their websites and things and their profiles just so people can ask quick questions and get, you know, a relatively decent answer. Um, yeah, that and more, basically it's more of the AI automation, like making it cleverer. So at the minute, this one can clip buttons, but could it clip buttons, make sure it's in the right category? Can it make sure that um, there's a trend? Can it can it see trends, that kind of thing? That would be awesome. Yeah. I just and I expect that as time goes on, there's going to be tools built that are very specific to certain industries such as finance or legal or you know well-being or whatever it is i mean there was one that um i saw just recently that was an empathetic empathetic voice ai tool so you could speak to the tool and it could pick up on your tone and whether you were surprised or angry or sad and it responded back to you appropriately. And again, those things will just get better and better. So you could imagine that from a, a well-being point of view, even the NHS using, you know, potentially something like that. But like say something that specifically connects. So you've got like say your bot that tick, 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 and then it, it knows to um, allow it to go through. But then that connecting to another part of your business and that being a full package in itself. Yeah. Like, it is quite cool that it it also will download a list of queries that I can then email to the client. So it it has a bit of that, right, okay, I've done this. This is what's left to do um so yeah it's interesting times yeah absolutely and then like you say i mean it's it's unstoppable i think you know ai is absolutely proving that it's it's unstoppable it's 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 coming down the hill and um and you know the more i speak to people like i say i think people fall into these sort of two camps of those that will and those that won't and mm. and good luck to everybody ultimately good luck to everybody you know nobody starts a business because it's an easy option we all want to you know reap the rewards from that whether it be more flexibility or more time or you know more money in our pocket or whatever um everybody's motivation is but you know to, to ignore these changes that are coming it could be quite risky yeah definitely yeah. And and you mentioned obviously being able to the the chatbots being able to give the quick answer. And I think that's something we're so used to in 2024 now. You know, we're used to just being able to go onto any website <clears throat> or any help desk and get that instant answer, you know, or Google something or get an answer. And you know, GPT being the same, you know, to be able to get something very specific to us instantly. Um, and that is just going to, you know, it's, it's more and more the norm, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And you can ask it stuff at like midnight yeah. or a weekend. When... Like so, absolutely. We, we all work flexibly. You know, people work shifts. We all work around the clock. We all work around the world. <laughs> Why True. would it not be available at all hours? Yeah. Well, that's where yeah. the human needs to rest. So... <laughs> So the computer takes over yeah and so what would you hope i suppose as a as a final thought what would you sort of hope you know i don't know in, in one year two years time you know where you are in your business as far as what ai has enabled you to do um in in accountant um i would hope that it allows us to be more responsive we are pretty responsive as it is but just a little bit more would be good I mean the clients aren't even asking for it I'm just like I want it <laughs> yeah 
yeah. yeah. But like you say, it's been it's been focused on their needs as well, like you say. So even though clients are really happy with the service, but to not move with those times soon feels if you're on the back foot and and to not yeah. um you know give them the best that you can, you know, why would you not do that? Because you're scared, I suppose. A lot of people are still scared of it, aren't they? But it's it's not really anything to be scared of. Yeah, absolutely. And like I say, I think like I say, the examples you've given as well have been a great way for people to understand practically how business owners are using tools within within their own business to make areas more productive. Um, and like I say, to meet the need of maybe where it's not enough work for a VA or it's too specific um, and actually that bridges the gap. So then when maybe you get a VA that can is is able to use those kinds of tools is is an added benefit surely and and i would argue a necessity going forward because that's what the clients of the future will expect is a, is a va that brings the best of their human expertise and skills and know-how but also doesn't necessarily know every tool out there because that's just going to be you know not yeah. possible but who has the confidence to be able to say yeah okay let's have a look and let's use some of these tools yeah exactly that yeah lovely and let's say i mean what i'll do is i'll just pop up on the screen again your linkedin if people do want to connect with you on there rachel like i said, i i know rachel not just through through business but i know her personally she is um a lovely person if you've as you've seen um <laughs> but like i say she really does have a strong passion for helping small business owners with their finances so thank you so much rachel for for joining us this morning no, thank you for inviting me. It's been fun. Oh, thank you. And I'll catch you soon. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.